Hello, that we are discussing diseases of the larynx in our Thursday's lecture, and today we will discuss a very important topic regarding foreign body aspiration and ingestion. Imagine that you are sitting in a restaurant enjoying your lunch, and a person sitting next to you suddenly started choking. And being a medical student or a doctor, you know. that the person has got foreign body aspiration so what will you do in today's lecture we will discuss what you should do immediately so that you may be able to save the life of that person first of all few statistical points regarding epidemiology around 1500 to 3000 deaths occur per year in us by foreign body aspiration Among these, the eighty percent of the cases are pediatric, and eighty percent of the adult esophageal infections have underlying esophageal diseases. But less than ten percent of pediatric cases have esophageal disease. Usually, male are more affected than the female children. So, what an aspirated foreign body can cause? It can cause complete upper airway obstruction that can lead to death. it can cause partial upper airway airway obstruction in which the patient can present to us with wheezing chest pain and mucosal injuries can lead to bleeding and if the lower airways get obstructed patient can present to you with atelectasis pneumonia and decreased breath sounds what are the common objects that are aspirated by the children these can be peanuts coins fish bones balloons buttons toys pins hair clips marbles seeds nuts screws or nails so all these are common objects that are present around the children so that can easily get aspirated if what are the emergency treatment of aspirated foreign bodies there are few maneuvers that can be done immediately so that the foreign body can be expelled out first is the hemlich maneuver then the back blows then the chest thrusts then the finger sweep or grasp hemlich maneuver is very effective if you done it in a proper way so how you do it you stand behind the victim's body and then by making a fist by your two hands you actually give thrust at the lower chest by standing behind the patient and you give two to three thrust in a forceful way the purpose is to increase the intrathoracic pressure so that the foreign body can be expelled then what are the back blows if the patient is unable to speak or cough effectively you deliver four rapid forceful blows between the shoulder blades with heel of hand while supporting the patient chest with the other hand then what are the back blows you hold the infant in head down position while delivering back blows and the chest thrusts are important that you hold the infant on the thigh in the head down position and delivers up to four chest thrusts in the same manner as the chest compression so by this way you can expel the foreign body in an emergency situation what are the symptoms of foreign body aspiration into the tracheobronchial tree patient can have respiratory arrest patient can have strider up to 40% patients have no symptoms but classic triad is wheezing coughing and dyspnea the chest x-ray is important in as aspirated foreign bodies about 6 to 20% cases you can be able to see foreign body on an x-ray because it is radio opaque but chest x-ray can be normal in 18 to 33% of the cases what are the chest x-ray findings which you will be able to pick if the patient has 
foreign body in airway. See these two x-rays. On the left side is the inspiratory film and on the right side is expiratory film. Here you can see that there is hyperleucency on the left side or the radioleucency on the left side and on expiration you can see that the right lung is decreased in size but the left lung is still the same. Why is it so? It is because of the ball valve mechanism of the airway obstructed foreign body. For example, if foreign body is in the, in the main bronchus, the air can go inside the lung but it will not be able to go outside. So even on expiration, the lung will appear hyperinflated. So in this case, there is foreign body in the left main bronchus. What are the other studies to consider the aspirated to see the aspirated foreign bodies? Fluoroscopy it may enhance yield up to 76% and the CT is also very helpful. What is the management after diagnosis of aspirated foreign body? Bronchoscopy is usually very successful. So bronchoscopy under GA should be done and it is successful in 99% of the cases. Patients should be observed 12 to 24 hours post procedure till the chest x-ray is normal. Then the foreign body ingestions. What are the risk factors? If the patient is having developmental immaturity, if the patient is having psychiatric illness, then altered level of consciousness, structural dental abnormalities, abnormal deglutition. So all these uh, factors can lead to foreign body ingestions. Then the high risk food, the chicken bones and fish bones have more chances of getting infected in the upper GI tract. Here there is a lateral chest radiograph showing a swallowed dental prosthesis in esophagus at the level of aortic arch. Here there is swallowed denture. What are the most common types of foreign bodies which are ingested? First is the meat, most commonly in adults. Then the chicken bones, and the chicken bone is more co is the most common cause of perforation because of its very sharp edges. Then the swing needles, then the safety pins and pills. Here there is can opener in the cervical esophagus, in PA view and lateral view. Here there is safety pin in the PA view and in the lateral view. Here there is chicken bone stuck in the cervical esophagus. Okay, fish bone can cause dysphagia. But only 20 to 35 percent of the patients with dysphagia after eating fish prove to have a fish bone. And most of these are in the posterior pharynx and retrievable with megal forceps. For persistent symptoms, endoscopy is needed because only 33 to 50 percent of the fish bones show on x-ray. Here is another x-ray, the lateral neck and showing a fish bone in the cervical esophagus. So what are the symptoms with which the esophageal foreign body patient can present? Patient can present with dysphagia, gagging, coughing, drooling of saliva, refusal to eat, vomiting, chest or neck pain, and odynophagia. And what are the different sites of esophageal narrowing? These are the sites at which the foreign body can get impacted. First site is cricopharyngeus, then the aortic arch, then the left main stem bronchus, then the gastroesophageal sphincter. So these four sites are important and the cricopharyngeus is at the level of 15 to 17 centimeter from incisors, aortic arch at the level of 22 to 24 centimeter from incisors, left main bronchus 28 to 30 centimeter from incisors and gastroesophageal sphincter is 40 centimeter from incisors. What are the different pathologies that can cause narrowing of the esophagus? 
These pathologies can be intrinsic, for example, tumors or structures, or can be extrinsic because of tumor or the vascular lesion. Coins can also get ingested, usually by children, and they tend to lodge in the frontal plane in esophagus. And up to 30% of children with coin lodged in the esophagus may be asymptomatic. So this is a chest x-ray, PA view of a coin in the esophagus, and this is the lateral view. So chest x-ray is important in diagnosing esophageal foreign bodies. Usually, you should have two planes, one the PA view and the other the lateral view. And if the foreign body is radiolucent, then we can go for barium swallow or the gastrographin swallow. So removal of esophageal foreign body is usually flexible fiber optic endoscopy is done these days and it is a method of choice. In general anesthesia is usually required in children and if the food impaction is there and you uh, cannot retrieve it, then you can push it in the stomach rather than remove. And if flexible endoscopy fails, then rigid esophagoscopy under GA should be done to remove the foreign body. Here I want to show you a video. Here, this is a video of flexible fiber optic laryngoscopy, uh, fiber optic esophagoscopy, in which a foreign body is being removed. You can see that you are going from the esophagus into the stomach. So this is the foreign body here so the key is being retrieved with the help of forceps Should be, you should be very careful while removing it so it can so it cannot cause injury to the surrounding structures esophagus if there is perforation in the esophagus there will be air in the cervical soft tissues subcutaneous tissues supraclavicular or mediastinum and patient can have pneumothorax pleural effusion and a retropharyngeal swelling this is a possible complication of the esophagoscopy that there can be esophageal perforation. This is an x-ray showing esophageal perforation. You can see the air in the pre-vertebral column from the hypopharyngeal esophageal perforation. So what should be done if there is a stomach or intestinal foreign bodies? Only 1% of the objects that reach stomach will require surgical removal and only 2 to 7% of the high risk objects will need surgery. 90% of the foreign bodies will pass in less than 7 days. So what are the indications of surgical removal of foreign body from stomach or intestine? If there are signs of obstruction, if the patient presents to you with persistent vomiting, if there is progressive abdominal distension, if the patient have abdominal pain or peritonitis, if the patient has GI bleed and if the object is fail to move distally for more than two weeks. At the end, there is an assignment for you people. This is a case, this is a uh, question. A six year old boy suddenly started choking while playing with his toys at home. His mother rushed him to the nearby hospital where he started becoming cyanotic 
and his oxygen saturation started dropping rapidly so what is your diagnosis what will be the initial step of management what investigations will you carry out and what will be the definitive treatment